this is, but this is almost an analogy for the rest of your life too. If things don't get difficult, then there is no growth in consciousness. So to become aware of presence is not really it. You become aware of yourself as presence, that's a bit better. Or perhaps even better, presence or consciousness becomes aware of itself. And that's kind of the closest you can get if you want to get it, as far as language is concerned. So it is important to experience, to, to awareness, not in relation to, not let's forget for a moment our sense perceptions, because we talked about that also, how to, to perceive without conceptualization, unless conceptualization is needed, then it's fine, then you bring it in and so on, but now awareness, just awareness, which is in essence, this is the essence of meditation. The essence of meditation is not something that you do, because it's misleading to think of meditation as a doing, because any kind of doing requires time. You can't do without time. It implies that there's something you moving towards something. So even the underlying idea when you meditate that you're doing meditation can be an obstacle to true meditation. Uh, so meditation is not a doing because meditation is a realization of being. So you have the these two dimensions, the doing dimension, which is to do with the world of form, and the transcendent dimension, which is the timeless being itself, the formless, which is consciousness, if you want to give it a label. And you embody both, one could say, there one could say there's two of you almost. This is not the ultimate truth, but it's a way of putting it. There's two of you, there is the personal being, the person, the personal self, the, the human, the human you, and you know that very well. The human you is uh, not easy, doesn't have an easy life. No human has an easy life. And if you, there may be one or two of you who were born into very privileged circumstances, and you might say, oh, that's an easy, I'd like to have a life like that, to have a, never need to worry about making enough money, or it's all there already provided. There's a trust fund, you're born when the baby, you're a trust fund baby, and for the rest of your life, do you have to worry, do you have to worry about that? Okay, oh, I love that. And then everything you, want is immediately given to you in your childhood and then you go on. Uh, so it seems an easy life and this very easy life would turn out to be your greatest obstacle and create the greatest amount of suffering for you because you will develop into a very superficial egoic creature that makes life difficult for yourself and others and then you suffer more and more. So you can't escape it. <laughs> you can't escape the challenges of life, no matter how you imagine it to be. The human is here in order to be challenged. The human is not here in order to find ultimate happiness, ultimate satisfaction or fulfillment on the level of the human. The level of the human is not designed for that. And the world doesn't know that yet, because humans are, are looking for solutions, the real solutions on the, on the horizontal level of the human, the human dimension. 
and it's not theirs. You get challenged, and whatever situation you go into, you will find the element of dukkha, the word mentioned last night, unsatisfactoriness, suffering, unhappiness, misery will creep up, creep into whatever you do somehow, sooner or later. If it hasn't crept in yet, just wait a little. And you'll find, even if you, you, you meet the most wonderful person, and then you get married, or you don't, or whatever, but you start living together, and sooner or later you'll discover this most wonderful person that you thought is going to make you happy also makes you unhappy because you hadn't seen the full person yet. <laughs> there was a, something hidden that only reveals itself when you start living together. <laughs> As long as you only go to have dates, it's fine. You can gaze, <laughs> gaze into each other's eyes. <laughs> and it's wonderful. <clears throat> so you can't escape it on the human level, you get challenged. And that's fine, and you, you need the challenge, and you need to challenge yourself. In, if you want to create something, if you want to bring about some change in this world, you want to make your life, your so-called life better, you are looking to achieve this, or to learn this, or to acquire this, that's part of being human. We don't deny that. And if you don't want to achieve anything, let's say you have no ambition whatsoever, you say, oh, it's all pointless, because you don't want to, be, you don't want to challenge yourself, then life will challenge you even more. If you don't, if you, challenging yourself would be even to engage in physical activity, in jogging, you're challenging yourself, or you're lifting weights, or you're challenging the body on a physical level, the only way you can make the body stronger, the physical body, is by making, let's put, I'll put it like this, it's a strange way of putting it, but it's true. You have to make life difficult for your body, otherwise it doesn't get stronger. Well, to lift a weight is, I mean, if you ask the body, would you rather have a good, just relax or lift this weight? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I just want to relax. It's not. I don't want to have make, don't make my life more difficult than it needs to be, so I just, okay, it, you don't get stronger without, the, but when you, you make life difficult for the body, then more energy is demanded and more energy comes flowing in. The energy doesn't come until you demand it. There's a request or a demand for energy because there's a, there's a gap between uh, what you want and what, at the moment the body doesn't have enough energy and suddenly it comes. And then you reach a point when an influx of energy starts, then you, it's no longer perceived that the, the life, uh, you make life difficult for your body. Once the energy starts flowing, the body enjoys this flow of energy. But before the energy starts flowing, life was difficult for the body. And so you always, you meet always the, the threshold of life gets difficult for the body and then energy comes in and then suddenly not even perceived as difficult anymore. And that you may experience it every day when you start exercising. <clears throat> and this is, but this is almost an analogy for the rest of your life too. If things don't get difficult, then there is no growth in consciousness. We talked about the influx of energy for the physical body, but energy can manifest in uh, many frequencies, and ultimately it is consciousness. And so you cannot become a more conscious human being uh, unless you experience the challenges of life. And it's good to uh, create, want to create this or that, so you are choosing 
to some extent, you can choose the challenges that you want to experience. Whenever you want to bring about something new in this world, it's, it's a challenge, but you created it. You say, I, you want to create this, hopefully it comes from a deeper level, not the ego that says, I need, I need this, otherwise I won't be happy and fulfilled, I won't be completely myself, I need to achieve this in order to become happy and recognized and make it, I want to make it, weird expression, make what? Myself, I want to make myself. If you don't challenge yourself, life will challenge you and you will encounter challenges where you, you certainly didn't want that. So you can't escape, it's good to challenge yourself in a sane way, not in an insane way. Mm -hmm. And so part, one part of the challenges of life is the challenges that you yourself create and that can be divided into, into a conscious creation, you, you want to manifest something new, whatever it is that you want to, in your career or something you want to build up. And then there are challenges that you create unconsciously through uh, the conditioned mind. And that's a huge amount of suffering for humans. They create their own challenges, but they perceive it as if the challenges were coming at them from the outside. Not knowing that a huge amount of problems, difficulties, challenges, whatever you want to call it, are created by their unconsciousness in relation to other people, in relation to situations, the reactivity that amplifies every little problem that comes from the outside through other human beings or situations, the reactivity, the unconscious reactivity of the ego amplifies the problem and makes a drama out of relatively little. It doesn't have, it didn't need to become a drama, but it becomes a drama through reactivity. These are challenges that humans create unconsciously for themselves. And it's a great moment of awakening when you realize that many of your difficulties, you were a significant contributing factor, let's put it like that, in uh, the difficulties that you seem to encounter in situations and through other people and so on, and you discover your own reactivity, example. That's a huge discovery. And then there are other types of challenges that come at you seemingly out of nowhere. You, there could be, it could be that uh, an earthquake could happen here in, in a minute. Or well, let's not manifest it. <laughs> uh, and we don't, you know, sudden, it comes out of nowhere. Oh no, or aliens suddenly land. So, so the challenges, some challenges seem to come out of nowhere, but you can't, there are so many there are different types of difficulties or challenges that you encounter, but you cannot escape the difficulties and the, and the challenges. And because you, it is, and it's not only on the human level, animals encounter their own challenges. Even plants and trees encounter their own challenges. Every life form encounters uh, obstacles, opposition. Uh, every life form experiences the uh, fragility of life, that it's not, uh, it's, it's very, life is fleeting and uncertain. And that is how gradually consciousness evolved because consciousness needs to come in as a response to the challenges of life. And uh, that is, uh, once we realize that life is meant to be challenges, challenging or difficult, once you realize that, then a huge, you become free of the huge illusion that there's something wrong when you, uh, your life becomes difficult. <laughs> it's because that these are all necessary. You need to, you need that. That's the uh, good news or bad news. 
the world isn't here to make you happy, this is how I put it. The world is not here to make you, this is the human level of this. It's not here to make you happy, it can't do that. No matter how hard you try, it's here to make you conscious to, by challenging you, by making your life difficult. And of course, as I said, that part of great part of it may be your own unconsciousness, but that's how you, if you make your own life difficult through your unconsciousness, you begin to suffer more and more and more. And you don't even, for a long time, you don't know that you're creating your own suffering. It's always like, it's them, it's there, it's there, it's there. The most unconscious people are continuously projecting that all causes of their misery and unhappiness are outside. It's all outside. When you listen to a very unconscious person, you, can, you, can, you listen to the, the themes that run through them, their narrative are blaming, complaining. It's always, it's them. Him, her, them, <laughs> or, or the situation, or the places. <laughs>